Aleluia. We greet everyone, of the Lord Jesus. We're going to open our Bibles in the book of Matthew, Matthew 18. We are going to give continuity uh, on the topic forgiveness. Forgiveness is a balm. Forgiveness is an agent of reconciliation between God and man. God manifests His love towards the world through forgiveness. In John 3, 16, he says, God loved the world in such a way that he said, forgiveness. Jesus is forgiveness. Jesus has many names, but one of Jesus' names is also forgiveness. And the word says that Jesus loved, loved the world in such a way, and he loved until the end. And when, as we see the last breath of Jesus, he used an expression that says the following, Father, forgive them. So he went to the cross of Calvary to decree forgiveness to each one of us. Forgiveness to the entire humanity. And this is the balm. This is the agent of connection and reconciliation that we're going to once again speak about tonight. Forgiveness is on the basis of salvation. On Matthew 18, we're going to read a couple of verses. The 18. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be lost, loosed in heaven. Amen. We're going to say it again. 18, 18. It says the following. Assuredly, he said, Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosened in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. So, the, is there really speaking about connection and reconciliation and fellowship? Then Peter asks a question to Jesus when he comes to him and says, How many times will my brother sin against me and I will forgive him? Uh, up to seven. And Jesus answered, I don't tell you seven, but s 70 times seven. On verse 34, it says the following. And his master was angry and delivered him to the term torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart do not forgive his brother his trespass. Lord, we thank you for the moment of fellowship that we give to us once again to present ourselves before your sanctuary and we plead that once again through your word you may bless your people in your church in this place. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. In Matthew 5, 5 Jesus says the following, You heard what was said, an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. This expression, tooth for, for tooth and uh, eye for an eye, is in Leviticus, in one of the books of the Law of Moses, for eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. As he had been disfigured, a man will also do to him. So whoever killed an animal he will restitute it. But whoever killed a man he will also be killed. The same law will have also for the foreigner as well as for the one who is native. It didn't exist forgiveness between 
a man to man in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, there was the forgiveness of God towards man. A man would sin, and God would forgive David's sin. The prophet goes to David, speaks with David, and said, You are worthy of thy, because David knew the law, and according to the law, what he did, he was, he should be killed. But God now sends a message to the prophet saying that the Lord also has forgiven your sin. And the adulterous woman in the time of Jesus, according to the law, she needed to be killed. She couldn't, she should not be forgiven for her sins. And Jesus then is present and he, he says the following. Daughter, where are your accusers? No one has condemned you. Me, neither I condemn you. Go and sin no more. So there was no forgiveness in the Old Testament. It was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. So Jesus says, you heard that, those things. Sometimes we hear also those things, things that we are not supposed to forgive, and that that's how it should be, an eye for an eye, or tooth for a tooth, or foot for two, for foot, a hand for a hand. But in, in Jesus says, I, however, tell, tell, tell it to you. And Jesus also he asks us for, for us to make a choice. Are you going to give creed to me or are you going to continue to do what you heard or an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth or you're going to listen to me so and the, Jesus said my sheep listen to me so the sheep listen to their shepherd so then I tell you do not resist evil but whoever slap the, your right face and then you offer the, the other side and whoever wants to argue with you and take you uh, your garment, leave the cape. If you, somebody wants you to walk a mile, walk twa, two miles, give what you have and, and not charge someone that has borrowed money from you. And I tell you, love your neighbor. And, and people say, uh, you, you're supposed to hate your enemy. But what Jesus tells to his disciples is the following. I therefore tell you, love your enemies and bless the ones who curse you. Do good to ones who hate you. Pray for the ones who mistreat you and persecute you so that you may be children of your Father who is in heaven. So people, they hear one thing and th then Jesus says something else. So then the servant of God has to make a choice because a servant of God has free will. And this text that we just read in the Old Testament, when there was no forgive, forgiveness from, from a man to man, but only forgiveness from God to man, it speaks about connecting and disconnecting. So everything that you disconnect here on earth will be disconnected here and above. And whatever you connect here, you will also be connected there, above. Connecting is like fellowship and connection, as I said. And it is interesting that for us, it is from for us men, is from the bottom to the top, from from earth to heaven. And when God created, when God made a connection, He He created from top to bottom. God, the heaven and earth, but in order for us to get to heaven, we also need to connect to the brethren here on earth in order to be able to give continuity with this fellowship there in heaven. So whatever you connect here, if you disconnect here, we're disconnected there. Are two going to be walking together? If they are not in agreement, they're not going to walk together. And when are men not walking in agreement? is because they are not in fellowship. And when man is not in fellowship, 
uh, are they in the light or in darkness? They are in darkness because if you walk in the low, in the light, in the same way that He is, we have fellowship with the bread and the blood of Jesus purifies of every sin, and it is that's what is interesting that the blood of Jesus has the efficacy in my life. In the moment in which I have fellowship with the brethren, if I am not in fellowship with the brethren, the blood of Jesus doesn't have any efficacy in my life. About 12 years old, about 15 years ago, I'm not sure, in a city when the region I came from, Bahia, a pastor came to the church and looked to the church and the Lord revealed to him that on that day, before the service started, the brethren would need to for, ask for forgiveness to one another. The Lord has revealed that for five minutes the brethren will need to look for one another and reconcile with one another. And once everything, ha everyone has been reconciled with one another, then we will begin the service. My brethren, it was something that was extraordinary. God operated on that day, on that moment there, in an extraordinary way. You know why? Because there was at that moment the forgiveness from one another. And Jesus says, love one another. And who loves, forgives. Jesus loved us in such a way that he forgave all our transgressions. And when we brought Jesus to the cross of Calvary, and He forgave us for this. So He requests the same from us, in the same way that He forgave us, that we may also forgive. There is a song that the, the instrumentalist is playing. It's about a servant of the Lord called Ser Sergio Lopes, which speaks about the power of forgiveness. My, my brethren, Forgiveness has a, an amazing power. When you forgive, your life is transformed, is changed. And the song says the following, Forgive is much more than laying your hands. And to say that I forgive you, my brother, is use your voice is easy, shaking your hands is easy, it's difficult to reveal the heart. But if your heart forgives, it's easy to, real, to notice because your heart is in the accomplice of your sight. Forgiveness is a beautiful thing to find. If I have hurt you, I recognize that I am a fault, and now I realize how much evil I cause to you. How can I speak about love if I, can, I don't know how to love? I need you, my God, to teach me. The servant of God needs to leave this, has to have this strength inside of them, this ability to forgive one another. Jesus, my brethren, he was persecuted, he was dishonored, expelled from his own land, from his house, he was humiliated, he was betrayed by his disciples, sold, whipped, the sweat of Jesus was transformed into drops of blood. He was spat on, despised, oppressed. He was brought to the slaughter. When he, he, as he felt blood, they gave, when I for water, they gave uh, vinegar. He was placed between two criminals. And in the moment he was crucified, Jesus said, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. My brother, many times we Harm, harm people around us. We don't even realize that we are doing this. Sometimes you say a word that was not correct and, or not in the right time that hurts, the wounds that afflicts someone's heart and we don't even realize. And our role in the same way as Jesus teaches is to forgive my brother. Forgive the brother because he doesn't know what he's doing. That's the role of the church. This force that we need, the strength that we need to have every day. And Peter comes to Jesus and he asks, How many times should I 
should my brother forgive against me and should I forgive him? How many times? And in Luke 17, 4, Jesus answers, if he sin you seven times in a day and in seven times they come to you saying that that they are repentant and ask for forgiveness, then Jesus says, forgive them. If he looked for you seven times, asked for forgiveness seven times, he was repented, then you need to forgive him. You know what the disciples of Jesus told Jesus? Lord, add faith to us. So, in order to forgive, you need to have faith. There were not people that were distant from Jesus. Those were people that were close to Jesus, the disciples. Lord, add faith to us. Sometimes James and John. John is the disciple of love. He, when Je he rested on Jesus' breast when, on the supper, he spoke with the Samaritan to prepare a, a resting place, and they didn't accept their presence there. So now James and John said, if you want, we can pray, but we're not going to pray for these people to convert. We're going to pray for fire to come from heaven and burn everyone out, uh, everyone here. Th those are the disciples of Jesus, right? They're going to pray and fire will come from heaven, burn everyone. And then, you know what Jesus said? He reproached to them. You don't know uh, from what spirit you are. I didn't come to destroy souls, but to save them. Look what teaching Jesus was giving there. Sometimes you want this, you want to pray so that Jesus would decree a judgment upon someone. This is not God's spirit. It's, it's another type of spirit. So then Peter asks, when Cain killed Abel, Cain was afraid of, of dying. Sometimes the person thinks, oh, if they kill someone, then they're afraid of killing. He was not very courageous. So then he comes to God and says, my transgression is so great that it cannot be forgiven. Then God comes to Cain and said, whoever harms Cain will be cursed seven times. So in other words, Cain, he had to be forgiven seven times. Because each person that, that harmed Cain, even with even righteousness, with righteousness, because he was not a good person, they would be cursed seven times by God. So nobody touched Cain. You know why? Because there was an order from God to forgive Cain. But one descendant of Cain called Lamech. He was even worse than Cain. That's why Jesus gave the answer here 70, 70 times 7. Because Lamech says, I killed a man when he wounded me. And I, so Cain will be cursed with. Would be, whoever uh, hurt Cain will be castigated seven times. Uh, Lamech, 70 times 7. That's why Jesus used this expression, not only seven, but 70 times seven, because he remembered Cain and his son. And it is interesting that at the time of Adam, Abel died, and there was only one lineage left, Cain, and Cain generated six generations. When Lamech was the sixth generation, he says that the system changed, the lineage changed. The lineage of Cain stopped being counted. You can see in chapter 4 of the Bible, in Genesis. So then Adam, he met his wife, and God gave him a seed according to the one of Abel that Cain killed and was given his name Seven. And one Seven, he grows up. The word says that then began to call the name of the Lord upon the name of the Lord. And the, the, the generation of Cain was a per perverse evil that never forgave. 
it never called upon the name of the, the Lord. But the generation of seven the, was a generation that then began speak, calling upon the name of the Lord. And Adam, he was the image and similitude of God. And the Bible says that seven was the image, it was symbolized Adam. So when you see the genealogy of Jesus, it is written that he came from seven, seven from Adam and Adam from God. So there was two genealogy, genealogies, one that does not forgive, one that stopped being written in the book of life, and one that forgives that is registered in the book of life, uh, in, the, in the Bible. So we see a judgment that God ha has over the ones who do not forgive. The generation stopped being counted. A new genealogy began from that point forward. So Jesus said that 70 times 7. And the parable of the, the, believer, the believer, the brethren, it speaks of a man that that owed 10,000 talents. He, he owed a lot of money. And there's a song that says, My brother, you know the worth that a soul has? There's a verse in the Bible that says, The redemption of a soul is extremely costly. So it has no price. So the resources are extinguished before. So this man, he owed a lot. His death was so great that he was unable to pay. So he was brought to make an, uh, an agreement with his Lord, with his creditor. And when he comes into the presence of his Lord, the creditor, he recognizes that he is unable to pay the debt. The Bible says that he was a servant. He, in fact, he behaves as a servant. He appeared like a servant. And when he realized that he was unable to, to pay, you know what he did? He prostrated before his Lord and re revered the king. He revered his Lord. And we can say that he revered God because this Lord, his king, is represented representing God and in in, uh, in agreement with man and God he prostrated and recognized his death so he rec I recognize my sins I recognize my transgressions I I cannot pay this death that I contracted this sin I know that the wage for of my sins is death, but be generous towards me, Lord. We can even say uh, the word of Bartimaeus and others, Lord, have mercy on me. We are servants of God. And one day, all of us, when we come into the presence of the Lord, a few minutes ago I did that, we prostrated before the Lord as servants when we plead to the Lord. We prostrated because we recognize that our wage, our reward is death. But we plead to the Lord for the blood of Jesus so that through the blood of Jesus our sins, our offenses could, could have been forgiven by, forgiven by God. It wasn't what you did and what I did. We recognized our death, which is too great. We recognize the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary for love towards me. To pay for this offense, for this transgression, for this sin. We made a supplication. We revered this wonderful God that forgave us, that saved us. There is a, a verse in the, the New Testament. I don't remember exactly here, but he speaks about that. The Lord, he ripped the bill that was uh, against us. So in the moment in which we prostrate 
ourselves before the Lord and we plead to the Lord, He rips our offenses. So He erases our sins. So uh, He completely forgives our, forgets our transgressions, which are not little. The Lord erases. That's what the King did. That's what the Lord did. What God did. He blotted out our deaths. He, he threw it on the sea of forgiveness, our transgressions. He forgave. My brethren, God forgave us. I have been forgiven. Glory to God. This is, this, this is what I'm telling you. The, the strength of forgiveness. The day in which you came to the, to the altar of the Lord for the first time, you were there on the, uh, on the garbage and the mud of sin. From the mount of garbage, we, he brought us into his plans to make us princes. That's what God made out of each one of us. We were dead, sunk into our sins, and God forgave us. Is there a greater death that I that the one I have again uh, for God? Is there a greater offense that I the offense that I did uh, that I did towards my against my God? I forgive, I I sin against heaven and I sin against God. I'm am I am unworthy, but the Lord forgave me. The Lord saved me. The Lord delivered me from this death. My, my time was numbered towards death. And that individual, he did that. He prostrated, he revered the, the Lord. He was treated with respect by his king. He was not uh, uh, hurt. He was not attacked, he was not humiliated, but he was forgiven. And the word says that the king moved of great compassion. But every time that man recognizes that he is unable to pay his death, Every time that he recognizes that he needs God's forgiveness, God's mercy, of his generosity. Oh, that's difficult. Gener that, that word, generosity of God, <laughs> right? God is moved of great compassion. Because God, my brethren, he is love. And love is forgiveness. The person that says that love and does not forgive, that person doesn't love. So he comes there. His death was forgiven. He blotted out the bill that was against us. That in in some way, in any way, was against us. He removed it from our midst and 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 nailed it on the cross. Colossians 2, verse 13 and 14. So the death I have contracted, that was contrary, that condemned me, it was removed, it was nailed on the cross of Calvary. So, the nails of Jesus, they will be on our death, our transgressions, our sins. And the word says, my brethren, that when this individual, he got out of the presence of the King, of the Lord, of the presence of God, later on, the service will be over. And we'll leave this place. We're going to our homes, our shores, our daily lives. 
And as soon as he left, he met with one of his servants, one someone that was in the same going the same way that he was brother. And he dealt with that individual. It was completely different than the way God, uh, the king, dealt with him. When he looks and he sees that his servant, his brother, that owed one percent of his death, he owed ten thousand. This man only owed one hundred, just one percent. An insignificant an insignificant amount compared to the death that he had towards the king. Sometimes a brother, sister, they owe us or I I owe because I think that's how it is sometimes what I owe to the, my brethren is an insignificant amount. Insignificant insignificant compared to the death that you, you, my brother, has towards God. So Marcelo, he owes me 100. But I owe to God 10,000. God forgave me 10,000 times. And now I cannot forgive my brother And the treatment was completely different. Once they asked David, should I fall on the man of man or on the man of God, on the hand of God? David answered, oh, I, w I rather fall on into the hands of God because God is merciful. But we also have to exercise mercy. We need to exercise forgiveness. And you, when you exercise forgiveness and I exercise forgiveness, the the person is great that benefited the most is myself. The Bible says, my brother, that he met with the individual that owed him more, owed him money, and he comes already grabbing onto him. His work, his job was he began in a, in a very aggressive way. The Bible says I grab onto him, and he. The Bible says, and he choked him. Sometimes, a person, somebody says something against me, and attacked me in some some way, and I, instead of forgiving that individual, I grab onto that person. I already go there. In an aggressive way, the Bible says that you sh to choke a person. How can you choke a person when you grab onto their neck, right? Uh, the neck is, speaks about fellowship between uh, fellowship between the the head and the body. So removing the hair, afflict a person, cause anguish, kill by choking. Sometimes people. They are so evil that they are unable to forgive, and they they uh, their desires to suffocate the brother or to attack the brother or to remove to take it their life. The person does not forgive. And the Bible says, my brethren, that the individual he did exactly to the same servant. And when when you read the Bible, he th that servant he fell to his knee and pleaded be merciful to towards me he used the same expression the same as uh, in the same way as the other servant came towards the king came toward the king and pleaded for forgiveness like uh, if I said Marcelo forgive me I sin against you brother Marcelo I kneel down before you brother Marcelo forgive me uh, Brother Marcel does not forgive me. Uh, I'm using an ex example. He's a nice person. I'm the one who's is a better person here. Oh, Marcelo, forgive me. And Brother Marcelo does not forgive me. And he suffocates me. 
Oh, but you, I'm not going to f forgive you. That's what it is. You are evil, you're this, you're that. You deserve to die, you miserable person. <laughs> right? That's how it is. And it's interesting that, my brother, that this is when Jesus said he spoke to his disciples. It happens inside of the church. Be merciful towards me, however. He, however, was didn't want it. How interesting is this? They, they, they could have used a different expression, but the Bible says that he didn't want it. He could have forgiven, right? Yes, he could. But he didn't want it. Can I forgive the brother? Yes, but I don't want to forgive. That's it. That's a decision I made. Nobody... It's nobody's problem. That's my problem. So he thought that this was going to go unnoticed. The Bible says that everything that all things are naked and visible towards God. Doesn't matter how that I am dressed up or completely naked, God sees me in the same way. God knows ex everything that is inside of your heart and your thought. That's why it's much more important to forgive with your heart. It's much more important than uh, stretch your hands and say, I forgive you. God looked to you with the eyes with like flames. And he thought that everything was going to go unnoticed, but he was denounced. The person that is not forgiving does not forgive, he is denounced to God. And the word says, my brethren, that when his Lord, his King, he became aware that that man did not forgive his servant, he was outraged. But isn't God love? Isn't it true? God is love. But God is also judgment and justice. God is righteous. Something like that, something like that could not have gone unnoticed. God is, is fair. I hurt my brother. I choke my brother. I cause anguish, anguish to my brother. I oppressed my brother. You think it's going to be like that? That's it? No. So the Bible says, my brother, that he was called back into the presence of the king. He was treated now, he was treated as an evil servant, a perverse person, an evil person. Like in, the ba like in Bahia, the the place I came from uh, really, really bad. So he was treated as an evil person, as a perverse person, a person that is evil, a bad person, bad character, because he did not forgive. He was a bad, indivi a bad individual. He does not forgive. An evil person does not forgive. A couple of days ago, I said, uh, a meeting that we had about 15 days ago, I used to collect magazines. I had like four or five thousand magazines. Those American magazines. Text several magazines, American magazines. There was a magazine, uh, number 123, but in fact it was 97. The cover of the magazine says, he does not forgive. There's a guy that was bared all the way to his neck. Christian forgive. An evil person does not forgive, but a Christian forgive. But this man was not a, a Christian, was an evil person. He does not forgive. The genealogy of this man was not of se se seven, but of Jesus, but he of the descendants of Lamech, a man that doesn't have the ability to forgive. The Bible says that this man was 
delivered. And you know who denounced this man? Who denounced this man? He's written. He's Lord. God delivered him, the evil man, to the tormentors. Sometimes a person spent 10, 20, 30 years and have, they have a tormented life, an anguished life, depressed. They only walk around with a long face. You know why? Because their heart is filled with bitterness. And for as long as they have a bitterness in heart, there is a curse upon them. They have given by the Lord to the tormentors. Sometimes I forgive Marcelo because I, I'm a good person. No, you're not a good person. I forgive, you know why? Because so God can forgive me. And God may not deliver me to the tormentors. Because without tormentors, the life is already difficult. But with tormentors, everything gets much more complicated. Many people are suffering today in our churches. And the servants of God are suffering because they don't have the ability to forgive. Because the Lord, the Lord delivered them to the hands of the tormentors. My, bro my brother and sister, forgive. It is a matter of intelligence. The intelligent person forgives. If you go to the Lord's Prayer, it says, Lord, forgive my debtors. In the same way, we forgive the one who uh, the ones who owe to us. This may never pass. When then, when when I say this to God, I'm telling this to God. God, forgive me, in the same way that I forgive my neighbor. Jesus lived two commandments. The first commandment is love your God above all things, and the second is similar to the first, which which says, and to your neighbor like yourself. And, but if I don't love myself, how can I love my neighbor? From the moment that I do not forgive my neighbor, I am also not forgiving myself. Do you understand? The greatest demonstration that I love myself is when I forgive my brother. Because if I love myself and I forgive my brother, then forgive me. God forgives me. Then, what happens? I'm forgiven of all my sins. Jesus says the following. When you are praying, forgive. If you have something against someone so that your Father who is in heaven may forgive your offenses. Because if you forgive the man to their offenses, then your Heavenly Father will forgive you. If you forever you don't forgive men their offenses, then your Father who is in heaven will not forgive you your offenses. So forgiveness is the basis of the, the reconciliation with God. If I forgive my brother, I reconcile with God. If I do not forgive my brother, there is no reconciliation between God and me. I will continue to be a servant. Yes, I will continue to be a servant. He continues to be a servant. But a, a, an evil servant was tormented. And how about the others who have forgiven? They continue to be servants. The servants that are delivered. Servants that are saved. Servants that come into the altar of God to adore, to glorify, to praise the name of the Lord. A servant that before coming in to present their offering before the Lord, they reconcile with their brother. And that's what Jesus says in Matthew 5.23. When you, you come to offer your offer, if you remember that you have anything against someone, leave that before the altar your offer and reconcile therefore with your opponent while you are on the path and then present your offer. So then the servant of God is the one who present their offer before God but uh, has reconciled first with their brother 
and has forgiven their brother or sister. And because they have forgiven their brother and sister, they are also being forgiven by God. The death of the individual was much smaller, is insignificant compared to the death that that man had towards God. Remember this. Your death before God is much greater than all the death that anyone may have uh, done against you. My death towards God is much greater than any offense and transgression that anyone may have practiced against me. God, God is very generous. He does 100% towards you and just wants 1% from you. Is that you forgive your brother so that you, me, we all may be forgiven by God. Amen. Let's hear a song.
the church will stand up. <coughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Hallelujah. Look to Jesus. Lord, we praise you because you know us deeply, Lord. Lord. We praise you because you are the one who created us. Because you, Lord, you know how flawed we are, how weak we are, how much of sinners we are. Praise you, Lord, because in spite of that, you love the world in such a way that you send your only Son to forgive us, to restitute but one day we had we had lost. That's we praise you, Lord. Because there is no love greater than this. Because no other love other than this. That's why we praise you, Lord. We exalt your name. We praise you and we thank you for everything. In the name of Jesus. Then, our Father, we praise you. Thank you. Because at this moment we have uh, enjoy fellowship with our spirit for the forgiveness of our sins, of our flaws, of our failures. Because we have ripped uh, the, the, the bill that was against our lives. For, for this so great salvation, we adore you and thank you, Father, for your people, for your church in this place. And the ones who are connected with, with us, Marietta, Houston, Port St. Lucie, the remaining brother from other locations. So because this force of forgiveness may be present in their lives and the, f the life of their family members so that each day we may be reconciled with you, Lord. Bless us, us Lord, so that our prayers may be accepted before your face, Lord. Lord, we want to praise you and thank you, Lord, and exalt your holy name and to plead, Lord, that you may continue to protect your people from every evil delivering us from accidents, the crime, the violence, the infirmities, the pandemic, Lord, sustaining us, uh, sustaining our faith, our salvation, the fellowship, and the physical health, Lord, of your servants. Lord, give us a week of peace in your presence. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. You know what I mean? Say the wonderful grace of, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, your good and eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit will be the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Remember, and the church may be seated. The service is over. The brethren who are connected with us, if you desire an assistance, there are a couple of brethren who are connected that can give the assistance to the brother and sister and give you instruction and help and even pray for your life, for your home. And we are also available to help the brethren here in our church. Amen. And to all the peace of the Lord.